Okay, today we're going to have a look at changing the disc on a Mark II or a Mark III Toyota Yaris. Uh, it's a, a very straightforward operation. The reason I'm changing the disc, I went to the garage and uh, as you can see this is the disc I've already changed and they've got a, a lot of scoring in and uh, they're pretty much a disposable item. These have got 110,000 kilometres, 65, 70,000 miles. And the garage said, yeah, we'll change those for you, do the brake pads, that's 300 euros, 300 dollars if you like. And I <laughs> thought, yeah, right, um, I'll do that myself. The actual uh, disc costs uh, 40 euros, about 45 dollars, and the pads are a similar amount of money, so you're saving a huge amount. I mean, I don't know whether my uh, garage uh, um, worker is a lawyer or a doctor in his spare time, but it seems uh, pretty expensive for labour to me what's a relatively simple operation. Uh, figure on taking an hour each side. Uh, it's quite simple but uh, leave a good hour. So uh, as you can see that's the old disc and uh, the only thing you have to be careful is that there are two different disc types apparently for this model of car. Uh, so you look at, need to look at the chassis number, chassis letters when you're, you're choosing your disc. I'm not going to look at changing the pads because I've covered that in my other video which I'll link to from this one. But we need to jack the car up so I do that, um, there's a, quite a good place underneath the front of the car on the chassis that you can jack on. Uh, take the wheel off, take the old uh, pads off and then we'll look at actually uh, how we change the disc. What tools do we need? Axle stand for safety, uh, shouldn't work on the jack. Uh, the tyre wrench, standard choice the tyre wrench. Socket with 17mm socket, that's to uh, take off the, uh, the disc um, caliper. 7mm allen key, again for the disc caliper, small hammer is quite useful, set of pliers to take off the uh, spring for the disc caliper and a 17mm uh, wrench, that's again for the disc caliper. And uh, our new disc and um, new brake pads. These uh, say Eco friction, eco, it sounds uh, out there some good. They're Ferrodo, so they should be okay. I never trust these eco things, though. It's probably made out of, I don't know, old hippie sandals or something like that. You see, this disc is pretty scored uh, as well, so uh, it's a good time to replace it. Uh, what we're going to do is take the spring off, and then there are two rubber cups here um, which we'll take off, and the, that holds the caliper on, changing the disc, and we use this 7mm Allen key. So undo those bolts and then this assembly will come off. We'll put that in a second. So as you can see it's up on the uh, axle stand. Okay, so we can just take this spring off with a small pair of pliers. Uh, I would wear some glasses to do this in case the spring flies up and uh, hits you just to protect your eyes. Uh, put everything to take off in a safe place. And then we'll uh, take off these, see there's a couple of rubber cups here. On, and these are protecting these allen bolts. We'll take those off and if you look on my disc brake video I go into this in slightly more detail so I won't bother covering this so I say we just back those off and then we're ready to do the disc. Uh, these bolts are that hold on this caliper are very tight and the only way to shift them uh, is with, uh, with quite a lot of force. On the driver's side you can actually get them off by using the the jack like this and just um, uh, just using a spanner and the jack and the weight of the car to loosen the bolt off initially. On the passenger side it's a bit easier we can uh, use a big hammer like this to slacken them off. Get that started moving. And they must be torqued up to gorilla like levels get it moving it's not too bad. I should have a look in my uh, manual and for the top one it's the same same thing it won't shift easily but with a, a big hammer like that you can let it go. The problem on the other side is you're, you're hammering in the opposite direction to slacken them off and it just doesn't work, that's why I use the jack on the other side to loosen them, so that's a little tip. So driver's side jack, passenger side hammer. Cut. 
if you're in a country that's left-hand drive like Japan or England, India maybe, uh, the driver's side's on the other side. So as you're looking forward, left-hand side, you can use uh, jack to uh, slacken these two bolts off. On the right-hand side, looking forward, hammer. Okay, so that's the second bolt. It's got those two bolts there, and that's the, the caliper. I'll clean the dust off that, and the disc just comes off easily then. Uh, it's not got too much wear, but obviously that scoring's not ideal. So we'll take that to the recycling. Uh, so this is, uh, this um, affects the, the disc from getting too much spray on it and it's rusted through here at the bottom. It's, uh, this, um, Parts seem to be very uh, rust pro these days. We seem to have gone back in in quality a little bit. So that's the disc off and new disc. Just goes straight on like that, and then we have to bolt this caliper back on. So we'll look at that in a second. So before I put these bolts back on, I'm going to put a little bit of copper paste on. Um, so that 230,000 kilometers, I can get them off again. So we line these up, put these behind like that. And we're bolting back on. There, it's easy to do the top one first. Uh, get it around the right way, would be handy. Is on. Uh, this kind of shoe is on. Uh, make sure the disc itself is clean. Uh, shouldn't be any contaminants like grease or oil because it's going to ruin uh, the pads. Uh, it's also a good, good opportunity to put new pads on, which I've done on here. Make sure these two Allen bolts are back right out and we can just slide the caliper back on. And we'll bolt the whole assembly up, put the spring back on and we're done. So as you can see, it's, it's not a big job.